joining me on Friend Crafts. I'm Christine, and if you are new, I welcome you to my channel. Um, today, we're just doing an update uh, on what's growing in November. Uh, last month, I almost missed it, but uh, so I thought I'd take it this week and uh, try to upload it this weekend, if not sometime during the week. So let's see. Here is uh, my second shelf. Uh, in my growing room and uh, as you can see it's under lights and this is just the one uh, set of lights it's under so I have um, the ones that uh, don't require as much light I guess so let's see starting here um, I have I have my um, paths in the front here and some of the oncidiums, and oh, I should point to it. Okay, there we go. And uh, the Brassavola nodosa at the back there. It was on the higher shelf, um, but then I, re I realized that the tips were starting to get uh, a little brown. So I thought maybe it might be, you know, too much light I don't know but anyway I brought it down here and she looks like she's doing okay um, those two in the back here are my back bulbs that I'm growing one is the sherry baby and the other one is the Selogeny Laurentiana and uh, they have both taken this one obviously has shown signs with a, a, a new growth in um, or new leaf but this one here let me just reach for it has it doesn't look it doesn't look like anything's happening but I tried to tag her and I noticed that there was a root on the bottom so I just left her alone so yeah they're taken which is great okay so moving along uh, there is dendrobium king uh, kingianum uh, and I don't know if I should move her to a little less light but I thought I'd this is my first time with um, this dendrobium and so I'm still learning with it. So I, uh, for now, I know she goes through a winter rest. So just left her without giving her too much water or regular watering, but I'm not too sure of the light levels. So yeah, please, if any of you do have um, the same orchid, please do let me know, all right? This here is a tiny, tiny back of uh, not even a back bulb it's just a one of the tiny pseudobulbs of the Bellara marfitch howard stream that uh kind of fell apart while i was repotting so i just stuck her in here in a tiny little pot just with sphagnum moss and i've tried to keep misting the moss and not really drenching it as too much and she seems to be doing okay so we'll see how that goes now, none of these orchids have been watered as yet, and Saturdays are my watering day, so um, for most of them at least. So some of them will look dry, and that's just because I haven't got around to it as yet. Um, let's see, this is the orchid I did several videos on. It is the Xing Fang Little Boy, and uh, had absolutely no roots. So, all right, there we go. So that's one that's growing, lots of root tips, and there's another one I, on the other side, right here. So, yeah, so doing well, and uh, can't wait for her to be back up on her feet, well, she already is, I think, um, and just getting her to bloom. That would be great. Here is um, the orchid I got from Sunset Valley Orchids uh, when Fred came to visit. Visit? Yeah. Um, okay, I can't reach the label there. Back there is a uh, dendrobium that I'm just leaving. Uh, again, mixed signal, so I'm not quite sure what what to do. Similar to the Kingianum. Um, Except this one, all the leaves have fallen off, but as you can see, there's a, a, a growth on the bottom. So, I just wait for the moss to get completely dry, like crunchy dry, and then sort of mist a little bit, uh, because I'm not too sure on how those work. And uh, 
dendrobiums they're not new to me it's just that I haven't been very successful in flowering them so um, I'm still learning on that uh, this is my mounted orchid it's the Den Dimnia polybulbin doing great and uh, really I can see it growing in all directions which is the fun part about it um here are my mini fowls and just place them here to sort of brighten up this space and then going down uh on the bottom i have my cymbidiums the two that i have sitting here i usually take them out during the day and uh, bring them in in the night because it's too cold now but during the day, the temperatures are still in the teens, and so it should be okay. Nothing really to show you. I haven't been, uh, you know, I, I, I thought they might be easy to grow, and I'm trying them out. But uh, let's see. As far as I haven't done an update anyway, so maybe this is a good opportunity to say something about them. Um, I just noticed there's, there are weeds growing in there, too. Uh, I have a new pseudobulb here that's growing and another one inside there uh, doesn't look like I'm getting any spikes though so we'll just have to wait and see and it has now come right out um, to the, right to the edge of the pot so definitely a repot on that and if I turn it around here you can see lots of uh, old pseudobulbs and uh, yeah yeah, weeds. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so here uh, there is something that I'm not sure. Now, I don't want to be too... <laughs> now on to some not so good news. Um, here are my two halves of the... Um, <clears throat> Orchid that I propagated, the Phalaenopsis that I propagated uh, a few weeks ago. I believe it was about two two weeks ago. And um, I named them Cinderella, so Cinderella. And uh, this one's doing okay. She's got, uh, she's still got her roots all intact. Doesn't look very good right now. I, I'm, I really apologize for the backlight, but it's just, um, there is no other way for me to show you unless I take them off and they're quite fragile at this point so the reason I have to say I've started hanging them as opposed to having them in the box which I did for the last week and a half now is um, I think it was just too too much even though I left the lid open a little bit it just trapped in too much humidity and there wasn't enough airflow so this leaf here on Rella started to yellow and uh, it might have, she might have a case of crown rot. I'm not sure in which case she's a goner. But I put a good dusting of um, cinnamon and her roots, uh, most of it is still good. There are some that are starting to die out. But, you know, that was the whole point, I guess. It's, it's an experiment. Uh, and this was, you know, just uh, something I could have avoided. It, and uh, I don't think the experiment has gone wrong. Uh, if I can get one of them to uh, regrow, then it could have been both of them. It's just, uh, unfortunately, this one might not make it. Well, that's just the update on that. So that's Rella, and uh, we'll see. So what I still do with them is just uh, mist the roots very carefully, not letting any of that go onto the um, the crown, uh, and uh, just keeping them uh, here hanging out just because there's a little more airflow. I had the fan going, which I've turned off right now. So that's that. Now, just to give you guys a quick look on upstairs. Nothing much to say there, really. Um, let's see. Uh, they're all just, you know, they kind of look like they're not doing much. Uh, there's this uh, 
dendrobium phalaenopsis, I was expecting some activity on there, but um, you know, as far as spiking, but uh, nothing, nothing yet. Uh, but I do have a new, um, new cane. Yes. So that's that, and then. This is the Cattleya that I got uh, at the members table, my Orchid Society meeting, Cattleya, um, the green or fine green, green fairy. Anyway, I had bought her in bud and that's the reason I picked her up was because she had some buds on. And so now it looks like uh, they have developed, let me just bring her down. They have developed, I only have two left, one got hit and went sideways and the other one blasted as you can see. So yeah, I can't wait for her to open so I can share something with you. And uh, the Lycasti, the no name Lycasti, um, anyway she's got her leaves and the leaves are yellowing and I was a little concerned about that but now I find out that they go through a winter rest so I think she might be starting to go into a winter rest except that this room is tiny and I don't know the exact dimensions of it but it's a tiny room it's meant for our study uh, downstairs and um, when I close the door, um, I have the heat vent closed off, but when I close the door and with the humidity, humidifier and all the plants, um, even with the fan on, the temperatures don't really drop too much. And so I'm trying to figure out a way on how to do that. Maybe crack the window open a little bit um, and keep some cool in the, wind, in the nighttime just so that they get a little bit of a temperature difference. But we'll see. Uh, that's something I'm working on. So just onto this uh, shelf here, I have my path. Um, not doing anything too interesting, but this is a there is a new fan growing on the side. The new fan, actually, this is the new fan, and so I'm hoping we'll get a spike out of that. And this is my um, Golgora in spike, still in spike. And here are my uh, paths. And my um, tenifolia, um, I brought maxillary tenifolia. I just brought her here because uh, I wanted her closer to the fan just because the, the um, sphagnum moss is getting really yucky and uh, you know she's growing so I don't want to upset her by repotting or anything so I pulled off the top of it and it's just it's I guess it's too wet so it's always green and it just got really yucky on top I don't know how else to describe it anyways this is my Carianum um, and I think it's she's just pretty just like this so much um, her flowers are not you know too exciting but um, I, I think it's just very nice even watching her trail like she's doing there. Okay, and pardon the mess on the table here. I didn't get a chance to clean it down. Um, this is my um, Moniera Millennium Magic with two spikes and uh, the leaves are now dropping, they're going dormant and I have three left. So, um, yeah, I can't wait. Um, at this point, I've started to slow down in watering, even though she is in spike. And this too, it's my first time with the Catacetum family in bloom. So, uh, I'm kind of figuring it out. I, I believe I should be giving her a little bit more water, but not too much, because she's starting to go dormant. But then she has a spike, so the spikes may be supported by the energy in the, in the suit. It's looking nice. I'll, of course, share it with you guys uh, when she does open up. Okay, and then my catacetum window is now getting a little sparse because they're all going dormant one by one. So 
as you can see the leaves are yellowing on that one and I believe one or two leaves have already fallen off this one uh, hasn't started yet and nor has this one but unfortunately what I did notice was the little spike that it had on the side or what looked to be a spike just dried up so I can't even point to it because it's dried yeah you probably don't know where to look but it, it dried up so I don't know uh, what went wrong there but we'll see so I've cu started cutting down on the water and uh, just kind of feel and this one's still a little soft but if it get really bone dry then I just mist it a little bit with water this one only has the one leaf left um, this here is still you know green and not really doing much she's, she's still there I guess this one too and then there are two here that are completely dormant right there let me turn it around that way okay so I have a few orchids upstairs um, and I, I wasn't able to show it to you the last time but here is a, a dendrobium this is Zidenka and she has lovely flowers which I have not seen as yet but I saw the pictures on the internet um, but and she's an orchid that I got at one of the orchid shows but off of the members table and she was huge at the time and while growing I even managed to knock off half of her cane which was really really disappointing but then she was happy to put out another one which was nice so now from the older cane look at this I see something and uh, I want to know if that looks to be I can't get it to focus okay there we go that looks to be the start of the spike and it's on an old cane so I would be super excited if it is so that's um, something that I wanted to share with you okay and here is my dendrobium nobili uh, so the reason I have her upstairs is because this room is, gets really cold um, in the nights um, it's just above the garage and it is the coldest room upstairs um, so she gets a little bit of light as you can see this is in the morning um, however <coughs> I was hoping that I can get her to go dormant this way uh, because I know that no believes like a winter rest and uh, she has not shown any signs of that as yet so I don't know I really want her to bloom and I, last last year too I could not get her to spike uh, look like she was putting out some spikes but no anyways I see this little bump here on um, right there uh, if you can see that so I don't know if that is the start of a, well not spike, right, because they, they have their buds right off of the cane, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, so I keep her here, I keep her dry and just kind of mist the media when necessary. That's what her blooms look like, if you can see that. Anyway, that, that's what her blooms look like and I can't get the picture to focus. There we go, a little bit better yeah so we'll just have to wait and see i i know some of you have it you know are able to bloom dendrobiums with no trouble at all but i don't know i i don't have a lot luck with them uh i like them but if i can't get them to bloom then i gotta find something else right <laughs> anyways uh i keep trying uh here are my two psychopses i'm down to two now i used to have three one died i've just left that pot there for remembrance I don't, I don't know anyway this one she's put out a new let me pick it up sorry she's put out a new um pseudobulb completely new fan and uh the top of her other spike is just browning so i'm just letting her die back naturally i don't want to cut her off and this one this is the one with three spikes um well now she, she has the two of them cut off so it's just a one and uh, 
she's doing well she's got new leaves and everything and still in that little pot and loving it so it's easy for me to maintain them here because uh, I just um, you know wet the spag uh, sphagnum moss uh, almost just once a week and that's all I have to do and it kind of lasts through the week and if I find that uh, and I visit this room often so if I find that it's getting a little dry then I just uh, uh, re wet it so and here are my masdevalias again I know that they like the cooler temperatures and hence they're in this room that room like I said is a little too warm um, I like you can feel it's more of a tropical thing maybe <laughs> when you walk in there you can feel that it's warm not hot but warm and uh, humid and so I've just left them here uh, they're doing great. This is a division from one of my mom's. Uh, I don't have the label on it, but uh, I, sh I have a label somewhere. I just need to put it into the pot. But I noticed that she's been, I don't know, getting not so much growth. And her one bud has now died or blasted. I don't know if you call it blasted, but it's more like, I don't know, just silently died away. Um, yeah, so she was growing, and but now she's just kind of like, uh, quiet for a bit. And this one, let me give you the name on this one. It's Mastervillia Red Wing. And, uh, I need to wipe her down because she has a lot of dust on her. And, uh, yeah, she's doing really good. I can't wait for her to bloom again. She was blooming and now again she's gone quiet, so... I don't know if they are going through a winter rest also, but um, that's, yeah, that's that's the ones upstairs because I know I didn't share this with you the last month. So there you go, folks. And then to end on a happy note, I guess, <clears throat> here is the um, VYL Patico Pacific Nights, and she is still in bloom, looking lovely. Um, yes, and this is my VYL Homespun uh, Sprite Sapphire, I believe, and she's putting out new um, pseudobulbs as well. Uh, the reason I brought her over here is because she was starting to uh, get really crinkly leaves, as you can see, and um, in spite of me having repotted her, and I thought at first I thought it was just a shock of re having repotted, but then I noticed that the pseudobulbs were getting very thin too. So I've just brought her here because um, to kind of keep her up apart from all of the other orchids there in the room. And last but not least, um, here is let me just get the name Wilsonera Guanshin. Oops. Guanchin Sweetheart and this one's one of my early orchids one of the very first shows that I've been to I believe 2014 and uh, yeah I got her in bloom she's bloomed several times I think and again now the tall spike so I can't wait for her to open up she's got dark dark flowers um, like that and um, th that's actually a picture of her in bloom so yeah something to look forward to so uh, that's it folks for me from this uh, of November update I hope you enjoyed watching it I know it was a little long but thank you for uh, keeping up with the whole video until this point and uh, uh, I really do appreciate all of your support, and if you haven't done so already, do check us out on uh, our Facebook group. It's called Ferncraft's Love of Orchids. I have to say, recently the group has been growing um, quite fast, and uh, it's it's just a nice place to um, have, you know, share your pictures or um, ask any questions, and there are some really knowledgeable people in that group. Um, so um, I'm sure anyone would, you know, step in to answer your questions and really you can learn a lot from each other. And I know some of you have the, 
really really nice collections and I thank you for sharing your pictures with me and with everyone else it is um, so delightful to see that um, and if you haven't done so already on this channel do subscribe you'll be the first to know when I upload a video and until next time enjoy your orchids bye bye